Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our winter wheat uh, virtual tour, doing things a little bit differently this year. My name is Jonathan Kleinjohn. I'm the director of crop testing and the extension agronomist here at South Dakota State. With me today is Dr. Sunish Segal, our winter wheat breeder, and Dr. Emmanuel Bayamakama, our pathologist, our extension pathologist. So what we have here, uh, we're filming just 2.5 miles north of Brookings, South Dakota. We have one of our winter wheat variety trials. And I have a sign that I made up. We posted these at a few locations throughout the state so people could come and look at the plots themselves. And we have a document box so people can walk through, look at the different varieties. We'll be walking through each of these in the video today, just briefly. But uh, we have these at seven of our 15 testing locations and that information is available. Directions to those plots are on the extension website. Those uh, places are Wall, Winner, uh, Dakota Lakes, Oneida, Salby and Brookings. Uh, so in the virtual tour today, the first thing we're going to do is walk through each of the varieties and just talk briefly about each one, some of the characteristics. And then Dr. Bayamakama is going to talk a little bit about some winter wheat disease issues. So we'll zoom in closely on that. So today we are going to show you uh, the varieties, new and old, what are in the trial. So anyone uh, who's, a, who's, a, who's a wheat grower knows that uh, variety selection would be one of the most important uh, decisions you will make uh, in, in wheat production. So choose the variety which has performed over three years, not based on a single year, and look at the location which is the nearest to your uh, growing location. So uh, variety development doesn't take one year, uh, one year or, or one day, uh, it, the improvement takes over uh, a long time. So it takes about 10 to 11 years to develop a variety and we are working on, on, on those objectives to uh, provide you better and improved varieties. Uh, so stay tuned with us and, and we'll tell you what's uh, upcoming in the program too. Okay, we're going to walk through each of the individual winter wheat varieties now. Uh, we have 34 released varieties in the trial and then 10 experimentals from Dr. Segal's uh, breeding program. We'll only talk about a couple of the experimentals, but we're going to start at the beginning and they're, they're arranged pretty much in alphabetical order as much as we can do it. So uh, the first one we have here is AP18AX. Uh, this is a brand new one from AgriPo or Syngenta and this is a coaxium variety. A uh, new technology that was developed in Colorado and this is a herbicide tolerant uh, to aggressor herbicide. So this might be a good option for grass control, kind of kind of following up the clearfield technology that we've had in the past. Um, important to know that these uh, are single seed, are single season use only or certified seed only. Most of the coaxium varieties are that way. Yeah, very good against cheat grass and rye. And we have not seen this one. This is brand new, so yields in South Dakota are to be determined on this first one. Next we have Cowboy, uh, which was a joint release from Wyoming and Colorado, I believe in 2012. Cowboys perform fairly well in the state, uh, especially in the western half of the state, as you can imagine, as it comes from Wyoming. The thing to note for in Cowboy is it can have some lodging issues, although this plot looks pretty good, and the protein is usually pretty low in Cowboy. I wouldn't recommend this for the, the eastern or maybe even the central part of the state, but for western South Dakota, this is probably a pretty good choice. Yeah, good trout tolerance in Cowboy. Okay, next we have the first cropland variety, Winfield. Um, Winfield slash cropland, they are new to the winter wheat trial this year. The next four varieties are from them. The first one is uh, CP7010. I do have a description in the handout, uh, which is available in the document box at each site and is available online. I'm not gonna go through these cropland varieties because they're brand new and we just don't know anything about them, but feel free to visit the website and download uh, the handout and, and read it for yourself. Uh, from my experience, I say, see this one as has very good straw strength. As I mentioned, uh, CP7010 is the first one. Um, then we have three more. Two of them are coaxium varieties. We're not going to go over those in detail just because I don't know anything about them. They're brand new. Okay, moving on after the four entries from Winfield. The next one we have is Crescent AX. This is a new one from Plains Gold, which is the Colorado State uh, breeding program. As denoted by the AX, this is a coaxium variety. And this is also certified seed only, which is, is unusual from a public institution, but it's probably the wave of the future. Don't know anything about this. This is brand new to us. Looks a little lodgy here, but uh, we'll see how things go in the rest of the state. Next, we have a new entry from Lima Grain. Uh, you're starting to probably pick up on the fact that we have a lot of new material in the trial this year. Uh, this one's advertised as a good defensive winter wheat, but they say it yields fairly well too. 
Uh, we'll see how it does. As I said, again, this one's also new, so I, I haven't seen it. I don't know much about it. And lodging can be concerned, and scab can also be a little bit concerned. Okay, the next one is Draper. That's the newest one from STSU, released last fall uh, to the certified seed producers, and it'll, it'll be available to you this fall. So Draper has an excellent yield potential. It did very well in the western part of the state. It's actually topped the state trials for the last three years, and it did pretty good in the central part of the state too. So its calling cards is good resistance to soil burn mosaic virus and good yield potential and above average uh, quality. And straw strength is also decent to good. Okay, next we have Expedition, which was released from South Dakota in 2002. This is probably the oldest material. In fact, I believe it is the oldest material in the trial. We kind of leave it in there to show the difference uh, between genetics, uh, the new genetics and the older genetics. Still probably one of the standards for milling and baking quality, but yields in the trials have been near the bottom. We keep this one in the trial to be as a reference point, so to show what improvement we have made over the years. Okay, next we have another new one. This one's Flathead. This was released in 2019 from Montana. And we're, Sunish and I have both been impressed with how this one looks this year. Uh, this is the first year we've had Montana participate in our trials. So we're excited to see how this one performs. All right, the next entry is Guardian. This one's also a new one from Colorado, or Plains Gold. This one's advertised as, a, as another defensive wheat with two genes uh, carrying resistance to wheat streak mosaic virus. Uh, they say it has excellent test weight and, and good protein content. This one also is certified seed only, so it might indicate the, the trend we're going to see from the, the publics down the road. We might see more certified seed only from them. Yeah, good, good resistance package in this one. Okay, next we have Ideal. Ideal's from South Dakota. I want to say it's 2012 release, if I remember right. Uh, this one can put out some strong yields. However, if there's stripe rust around, um, it's very susceptible to that. It has done very well in the trials the last two years because we haven't had a lot of stripe rust. So this one can still put out good yields. We just want to be able to control the stripe rust. Uh, the place where Ideal does good, actually Draper also does good. So uh, if you are thinking to replace Ideal, Draper would be a very good option. Okay, next we have Keldon, uh, which is from West Bread or Bear. Uh, Keldon is very late maturing, uh, seems to yield very well in the eastern part of the state. Um, yeah, just kind of a solid performer uh, from West Bread. Um, I think it's about five or six years old. We'll see the other West Bread material later on in the trial. Okay, Langen is the next one from Colorado or Plains Gold. Uh, we saw this one the first time in 2017. Uh, it had a very good year in 2017. In fact, I had a lot of producers call me and, and ask about it. But 2018-2019, uh, it was kind of only middle of the road. So while it's probably still a solid variety, that's a, a good reason to evaluate multiple years of yield data when choosing a variety to plant. So it has good drought tolerance. In a, in a drier year, it'll outperform others, but uh, in an in a average year, it kind of like lags behind others take over. Okay, the next one is another new one from Lima Grain. This is LCS Helix AX, so another coaxium variety. Uh, medium maturity, medium height. Uh, they advertise it as a good defensive package. I don't know what, it's a, what it yields because it's, it's new to us. Okay, next we have an experimental line from the University of Nebraska, uh, Dr. Steven Batesinger's program. NE14696, uh, medium height, medium maturity. Dr. Batesinger provided a pretty extensive description of it, which is in the handout that you can either grab at one of the document boxes or uh, access online. So don't know much about it as it's new to us. Okay, the next one uh, we have in the trial is very distinctive. It's our only onless variety. This is actually a forage winter wheat. So those of you that grow winter wheat for forage want to pay attention to this. This is MTF 1435. It, it originated out of the Montana breeding program. They do have a partnership with Sioux Nation Ag Center in, in Pier uh, to sell it in South Dakota. So um, they advertise it as a replacement for Willow Creek, which is a very popular forage line but it also uh, can, can yield about 30% more in grain. So first year in the trials for us, we'll see how it does. So just to add to it, from this year we have a forage trial in the state. We have three locations, Oneida, uh, Pier, and Winner, uh, where we are testing about six lines, uh, two, two from our program, three from Montana, to uh, recommend to the producers what would good, work would good as a forage variety in the state. The next one is Northern. This is another new one from Montana. Uh, they advertise it as similar to Yellowstone, however, uh, since I have not seen any Montana material before, I don't know what Yellowstone is like. So um, this one looks like its flag leaves are staying pretty green, so uh, we'll see how it does um, to be determined. Yeah, good disease resistance package in this one. 
Okay, next we have another experimental line from Nebraska. NW, I believe it's 13493. We saw this one last year. Um, the W denotes that it is a white winter wheat. Dr. Badesinger says this one, if it was a red wheat, would probably most likely be released. But since it's a white wheat, I don't know if we'll see it released or not. It's evidently a very good cracker making wheat. But in the South Dakota trials last year, I would say yields were not terribly impressive. Good straw strength though. Okay, the next one is Owahi. It was released by SDSU in 2016. It is one of the tall types, uh, so the concern is, is a little bit lodging, uh, but otherwise has very good disease resistance package, moderate resistance to both leaf rust, trip rust, and stem rust, uh, even wheat streak mosaic virus and, and scab. So it can be a good yielder uh, in the central part of the state. The only concern is, is lodging inside. So uh, do not fertilize this one in the fall is the recommendation. Overland is the next variety. This one was released from Nebraska in 2006. Uh, relatively poor end use quality. I would say yields are still hanging in there uh, despite the fact that it's an older variety in the western part of the state. But I believe we have better material in the east and, and central part of the state to plant. Definitely we'll have uh, other varieties. Both Draper and Winner uh, would be the ones who can replace Overland. Okay, Redfield is the next variety. The Redfield was released from South Dakota, I believe in 2013. Cross between, I believe, CDC Falcon and Wesley. Redfield was named for its distinctive red chaff. I always think it's a very pretty wheat. Uh, in, in our trials, though, the yields probably average uh, slightly above average, so not the top yielder out there, but probably fairly consistent. And a good straw strength. Okay, now we're on to the AgriPro varieties. So SY517CL2 is the first one here. This is the only Clearfield variety we have left in the trials. Two genes uh, resistant to uh, the Clearfield system. Yields really haven't been terribly impressive, I don't think, in the South Dakota trials. This one has a little bit of issues with uh, some cold tolerance, but probably a good option if you need the Clearfield technology. Okay, next from AgriPro we have Psy Monument. Uh, Psy Monument, I would say, is arguably the one to beat from the AgriPro program, if not the one to beat in, in the entire trial. When we first saw this, I believe it was four years ago, they advertised it as a western wheat only. They did not want to test it in the eastern part of the state. However, it seems to have done very well even in the eastern part of the state, holds up well in high yield environments and does well in dry environments too. So arguably this is the one to beat. The only concern with this is sometimes a little bit lodging and a little bit scab, but otherwise this is an awesome, awesome variety. Okay, next we have uh, Size Sunrise, also from AgriPro. This one's advertised as an irrigated wheat for high production environments. I have seen some super high yields out of this. I'd probably say it's more adapted to the eastern part of the state and maybe the central, but in a dry environment, you're better off planting monument. So just a comment on all the AgriPro material, if, if, there, if there is one weakness, they have very good wheats, but uh, they are a little bit susceptible to FHB or head scab. I should mention too that Sunrise and 517CL2, the first one, are both certified seed only. Okay, the last entry we have from AgriPro is Cy Wolverine. This is billed as a replacement for Cy Wolf. Uh, I don't probably need to talk about Cy Wolf as it was very dominant in the state for several years. Very similar agronomically to Cy Wolf. They say it has a little bit better yield potential. I was a little bit uh, disappointed in the yields last year. We'll see how it does this year. But I would like to point something out. I'm gonna walk over here just a little bit. These three lines um, from AgriPro. Starting here, we have Monument and Sunrise, and then we have Wolverine. And just look at the difference in leaf senescence as you go from Monument, which is still very, fairly green, uh, to Sunrise, which is in the middle, to Wolverine, which the flag leaves are really starting to senesce or dry up. So what we see here is probably if the flag leaf can stay green longer, odd, odds are it's going to yield more. And it looks like Monument is the best uh, of these three. We'll see how the yields turn out. This one is uh, SDSU uh, variety named Thompson, released in 2017. Very good disease resistance package in it. It's moderately resistant to leaf rust and, and stripe rust. Uh, has as uh, the LR37 and segment in there. Decent uh, straw strength and uh, yields above average uh, in our trials in, in, in last three years. So it does pretty good in the central part of the state. Okay, next we have WB Grainfield from Westbred. This one, uh, I believe we've seen it for five or six years now. It was first released in 2012. It's been a very good performer, but I'd say performance has fallen off the last couple years. It's becoming susceptible to some of the rust, especially leaf rust. So in the absence of disease, this will still yield very well. It's a very early maturing variety, but as I said, it's getting some age on it and starting to have some chinks in its armor. Yeah, there are better options from Westbred. 
Okay, next we have uh, WB4309, also from Westbred. This is the first year for this one, so I don't know too much about it. They advertise it as a good disease resistance package, so we'll see how it does in the South Dakota trials. Okay, next we have another line from Westbred. This is WB4462. This will be the third year for this one. I would arguably say this is the best performer that we've seen from Westbred uh, to date. This year we'll have three-year yields. It's done very well both of the last two years uh, with good protein and good test weight. So uh, I would argue this is the best one we have from Westbred uh, to date. We'll see how everything performs this year. The only concern would be a little bit lodging uh, sometimes and a little less desirable quality, but a very good yielder. Okay, next we have uh, WB4595. This will be the second year for this entry from Westbred. Did very well last year. Over one year, it was second place overall in, in the central part of South Dakota. So it's a very nice looking wheat. Like I said, did well last year. Once we get some multiple years of evaluation, this could be another pretty good one from Westbred. Yeah, it's able to keep its leaf green. And good straw strength. Yeah, good straw strength. This one is certified seed only, so I believe it's 4309 and 4595 are the two from Westbred that are certified seed only. Okay, next we have Winter, which was a release from 2019 from South Dakota. This was named for the town of Winter, South Dakota, and the fact that it often is a plot winner. And with that intro, I'll turn it over to Dr. Seagal. So, uh, winner is developed from a cross between uh, a kind of line from Lima Grain and South Dakota material. It has uh, excellent yield potential, uh, so it won the trials in the central part of the state for three years. Then it it's also did well in the eastern part of the state and also did good in the western part of the state. So that makes it uh, broad adapted. In the northern regional trial, that's the trial conducted in the northern part of the United States where Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana, uh, Minnesota and Canada. Uh, it, this, this variety ranked in, in fourth, fourth, and second in the last three years. So overall, very good yield, yielder, as well as still maintaining the protein content. So it has decent uh, resistance package, as well as wheat quality for baking and milling is, 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 is good in the wheat quality council test. So uh, it has the entire combination that's needed, uh, good yield potential, good disease resistance package, plus uh, the quality, so it beat all the previous SDSU varieties as well as very competitive with, uh, with the private industry varieties too. So if you are growing uh, Redfield or, or Owahi or Overland, this would be the one to replace. So you can tell Sunish is excited about this one. So yeah, but this one will, should do very well. Uh, it's done very well the past three years. Okay, the last one that I'm gonna talk about is an experimental line from NDSU. They have a winter wheat breeding program up there. This is the first year they've participated with us. This is 14 Nord-1, so it's new. I don't know much about it, although the leaves are staying very green, which is a good sign, and I think it looks pretty good. We'll see how it does. So even though it looks tall, it has pretty good straw strength. So till now we showed you the varieties that have been already released and available to you. And now I'm gonna discuss about a couple of them which are very close to release. So the first one is uh, SD. DHA03282, that's developed from a technology called double heplite technology. This is medium height and a medium to late maturity, excellent yield potential, it ranked second and third in the central and the western part of the state. Very good disease resistance package, it's, it's resistant to stripe rust. Uh, very few of them are resistant to stripe rust, this is, this is the one. And very good straw strength also. So this uh, was increased around this field about three acres here and 37 acres uh, on north on the farm. So if this performs good, it would be proposed to release this this fall. So the, uh, watch out for this one. This one stood up in a 90 mile an hour wind in Mount Vernon. So good straw strength as Sudesh mentioned before. The second one is SD DHA and it's 0236, 2346. So it, this is also a, another one developed through double applied technology. It's tested last year. It uh, was the first year in, in crop performance trials and it did very well in the western part of the state. It has a decent uh, disease resistance package, it's moderately resistance to stem rust races of America and uh, has a very good uh, baking and milling quality. So it also has good straw strength and it's able to also keep its leaves uh, green. So it's, it's medium height to medium to late maturity uh, variety. So we have about an acre increase of this uh, onto the south side of the farm. So if this does well, this could, this could be released next fall. 
Hi everyone, again my name is Emmanuel Biamkama, I'm the extension plant pathologist here at South Dakota State. And uh, uh, one thing that I would like to remind our producers is that uh, plant diseases uh, are one thing that you really want to make sure that you're selecting a variety that is resistant or tolerant to some of these diseases that I will be describing. For, for this field tour in Brookings, uh, things are turning so it may not be easy for you to see most of the diseases but uh, we'll try to show you what we're seeing. So what I'm having here in my hands, uh, these are um, two tillers that have uh, one of the common diseases that we worry about in wheat and this is Fusarium head blight and as you can see this disease has caused these heads to be bleached and sometimes you can have the entire head bleached out, sometimes you can have just uh, spikelets that are bleached but this is caused by Fusarium head blight. So uh, this disease is, impo is important because as you can see the heads are bleached and these seeds will be light and will be chalky white. But one other problem we worry about Fusarium head blight is the mycotoxin that this pathogen can cause. So this pathogen, uh, this uh, mycotoxin, if it is in grain and it's more than two parts per million, the grain can be docked. So one disease we want to be sure of. And when you're looking through these varieties, uh, look at a variety that, ha that doesn't get its heads bleached and that will be resistant or moderately resistant to Fusarium head blight. But one way to tell is to look for the bleached heads and also sometimes the darkening of the peduncle. And so that would be because of Fusarium head blight. Now some other problems might cause heads to be bleached like insect damage, sometimes also herbicide injury. But if you see this peduncle kind of darkened and just maybe uh, some of the spikelets killed, that would be because of Fusarium head blight. So a uh, major disease in wheat and make sure you're looking for a variety that has tolerance to Fusarium head blight. Um, the other disease that we worry about the, will be um, the foliar diseases and one of them is uh, a virus disease called Barrel dwarf. Uh, this year we're seeing quite a lot of this disease across uh, many winter wheat fields. And this disease by now will kill all the leaves as you can see in these tillers. And so if you're walking through varieties, you might see some that are, uh, are really susceptible to bad yellow dwarf. Uh, this virus is transmitted by aphids. And so these will transmit the virus as they feed on the plants. So uh, again, look for a variety that's gonna be tolerant to uh, viral diseases, uh, especially the one that we're seeing this year, which is uh, bad yellow dwarf. The other virus that is common in winter wheat is wheat streak mosaic virus. We didn't have any here, so I don't have a plan to show you. But wheat streak mosaic virus is, is especially a problem uh, where winter wheat is planted early and where there was volunteer wheat. Uh, you can have this virus actually cause the entire field to be lost. So it can be avoided by making sure we clear our volunteer wheat two weeks before planting and there we'll avoid uh, wheat streak mosaic virus which uh, is another disease in in wheat so finally then i'll talk about some of the uh, foliar diseases we're seeing uh, in this plot a little bit area uh, we saw a lot of powdery mildew right now it's not easy to see but just like the name suggests the powdery mildew looks like ash has been uh, sprayed on the leaves uh, powdery mildew can cut out light and so cause the plants not to photosynthesize well and so can reduce uh, 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 test weight. So powdery mildew is one disease that we saw developing in winter wheat this year. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of leaf spot diseases like tan spot. So tan spot is going to be found especially on lower leaves where you will see these uh, lesions on the leaves. Of course, they will also reduce the photosynthesis of the plants. So when it comes to foliar fungal diseases, we can manage this with a fungicide. And actually a fungicide that is applied at flowering to control Fusarium head blight can also help us to control uh, some of these leaf spots. So the common ones are tan spot, and this year we're seeing some powdery mildew in, in a few fields. And then we have also seen stripe rust in some of the susceptible varieties, but uh, in winter wheat, uh, stripe rust didn't develop a lot to be a concern. Uh, in these plots, we have also seen leaf rust, but again, in one or two lines that are very susceptible. So for the rust diseases, this year, I think we've been off the hook. But again, we have ratings for these varieties in terms of their susceptibility to all these different 
diseases. So uh, make sure that when you're selecting a variety for winter wheat, especially this fall, uh, you're looking at a variety that is resistant or tolerant to these diseases. And in other circumstances, you may have to do certain agronomic practices to avoid chances of these diseases developing. For viral diseases, we can plant a little bit later um, to avoid mites which transmit wheat streak mosaic virus from moving from volunteer wheat to our new winter wheat. So uh, we can also destroy winter wheat, uh, excuse me, volunteer wheat by making sure we apply a herbicide and control the volunteer wheat and grassy weeds at least two weeks before planting winter wheat. So firstly, we would like to thank the producers of South Dakota through the South Dakota Wheat Checkoff. They fund the breeding program uh, and uh, we are here to uh, serve you, uh, provide you better improved varieties and we'll, we are very open to the feedback from you guys. So please uh, write back to us or call us anytime uh, with your feedback of how, how you like uh, our varieties and, and what improvement you would like to see in them. So we, we are constantly working on, on to improve uh, the wheat varieties day in day out and, and we are here to uh, support you. Yes, I'd just like to thank everyone for tuning in to this virtual tour and I'd like to thank uh, especially South Dakota Wheat Commission for their dollars of funding that help us uh, to put these trials on. Thank you to Dr. Segal for helping me do the virtual tour today. Remember there are seven locations uh, on which the plots are set up uh, for you to visit. Uh, do visit them before the harvest and have a happy and a safe harvest.